I think one of the most important things to understand for how we are approaching the Z270 chipset launch and the introduction, of course, of Intel's latest CPU is that we wanted to try to add, I think, clarity and consistency to what we have in terms of our motherboard lineup, which traditionally is very large. So for this generation, you actually have the introduction of two specific new series with the Prime and with the Strix series. When you bring in then our previous uh, two other series with the Tough series, as well as the ROG series, this now fleshes out four uh, unique individual series Series that have a lot of crossover in terms of their key functions and features and specifications, but at the same time, we've uh, taken the time and effort to really tailor some aspects of the design and the feature set to align with certain users. So in terms of your price points, um, you're generally going to start off with our, our entry level or the lowest cost boards being from the Prime series. Uh, your next step up of motherboards is going to be for the Strix series of motherboards. So um, that initial pricing is going to start off generally uh, around the $150-ish dollar standpoint and then keep moving up into about $200 where the highest end uh, Strix gaming series of motherboards is going to be. A little bit slotted in between some of those will be the Tough series where we have the Mark II and then the Mark I, which the Mark I will go over $200. And once you breach that kind of price point, you're going to go into the highest level of motherboard offerings that we have available, which is going to be the ROG series. If you're maybe a user that's more focused towards specialized water cooling and you really want advanced aesthetic uh, flexibility, then you're probably going to gravitate towards the higher end ROG series of motherboards. You know, if you're maybe in that middle zone where you want to focus still on gaming, but not necessarily jump into that higher echelon uh, for ROG, but still want a great design aesthetic, you want RGB lighting and things along those lines, the Strix is really going to be well suited for that. Now, a little bit kind of in this gray area is going to also be the Tough series. It makes a great foundation for a gaming or a streaming system, but it's also one that we've really purpose built for users out there that maybe have a little bit more of a focus on content creation or more professional usage models or advanced productivity. Really, for most enthusiasts, you're generally going to be interested in the Z series chipset. They're the most feature rich boards, allowing for advanced RAID configurations, allowing for readiness for things like Intel Optane, as well as fully supporting unlocked CPUs like the unlocked i3, i5, or i7. So overclocking is always an area of trepidation for a user. There's always the concern of whether I'm going to burn out my equipment, uh, whether it's going to be stable or whether it's going to be reliable. And what we've really tried to do to be able to make the process accessible and easy and allow you to realize the value and the investment that you've made in the memory and the unlock CPU and in the great cooling solution you have is to distill literally tens of thousands of man hours uh, that we've had from our team working on performance tuning and understanding what are the maximum margins the CPUs can operate at, the safe temperatures, the safe voltages, and be able to give you an easy turnkey option. If you want to be able to overclock it based on an assumed frequency, so maybe you go, I hope I can get to 4.6. Put in 4.6, and even if you don't know if the system is capable of doing it, we'll tune it to the maximum of that ability. Uh, regardless of however you view safety, whether it's for heat, whether it's for power, whether it's for voltage, we've accounted for that in our uh, software and in our firmware. With Prime Series and motherboards and having that white design aesthetic, we've released our dual series of cards, uh, which complement with a white design aesthetic as well. You know, for Strix and ROG, we've got a monochromatic color scheme, which perfectly complements the monochromatic color scheme that we see on our Strix series of cards or our Turbo series of graphics cards as well. We think this really allows for an interesting next generation narrative of having a, a great level of complementary kind of design aesthetic across all your components as you put your build together. You know, we're the first motherboard manufacturer in the world to have a fully synchronized RGB level lighting across an entire ecosystem. So this means that everything from your motherboard to your graphics card to LED strips to chassis LEDs, uh, RGB enabled memory to even keyboards and mice can all be synchronized and controlled. No other motherboard manufacturer offers that. And here we're really excited to have worked with Intel to be able to develop the first USB 3.1 front connection. And there'll be uh, chassis that are coming to the market to allow you to enable that. So if you're looking for the highest speed front IO connection, that'll be available on a wide range of AC series motherboards. For the fan control functionality and flexibility, our fan expert software continues to be the most advanced motherboard fan control software and uh, firmware uh, that's ever been released. So having the ability to have multiple temperature input sources, a GPU temperature mapping, calibration and profiling, average weighted response values, and a ton more has never been seen before on any motherboard manufacturer. And for this generation, we've taken even further, made bigger improvements to even offer better sound experiences for users. So I think regardless of whatever spec you're looking for on a board, we've probably innovated and implemented even a bigger version than you're aware of. 
Water cooling is continuing to be a very hot trend amongst the enthusiast community. We're seeing it, especially with the trend to have the visual aesthetic with hardline tubing and things along those lines. But we also have really cool implementations like having a dedicated AIO pump header, a water pump header, a high amperage fan header, right? Um, and being able to control PWM pumps or then even having the ability to uh, monitor water flow rate or water uh, temperature for input and output connections. So uh, across the board, there's gonna be a lot of different options and you just wanna look at these key feature sets uh, that we'll detail in definitely these other overview videos that are here on the channel. So you can definitely check those out. And for users that are looking for more aggressive price points and maybe not necessarily looking towards overclocking, there's a wide range of H and B series motherboards as well.